Unmasking Lee Marvin, The Secret Life of a Hollywood Icon Lee Marvin was a popular American actor who was well known for his tough guy roles in Western and action movies. In our video today, we are going to learn more about this great Hollywood icon, his life on the big screen and his personal life outside the studio, including what it took to make him the great actor we idolize today. You don't want to miss out on this great learning experience, and please don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to our channel and click on the bell down there to get notified every time we upload a new video. Lee Marvin was born on February 19, 1924 in New York City to his parents, Lomond Marvin and Courtney. They were both successful people, with Lomond working as an advertising executive, and his wife Courtney was a fashion writer. But despite their success, they were not very supportive of their children, which had a great impact on Lee's attitude in his young days. As a child, Lee was put in several boarding schools where he often got in trouble and was eventually kicked out. This became a trend until he joined DeWitt Clinton High School in New York, where he showed some hope of improving in his academics. However, he eventually got into trouble and was then sent to Street Leo College Preparatory School in Florida at the age of 17. The family eventually moved to Woodstock, New York in the Casco Mountains, where they lived in an apartment before they settled for good. Later on, after graduating from high school, Lee Marvin enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1942 during the Second World War, where he served as a member of the 4th Marine Division. He took part in the Battle of Saipan and was even awarded the Purple Heart after being wounded in action. During his time in the military, Marvin started performing in training films for the military which greatly contributed in developing his acting skills. His experience in the military also had a big impact on his personality and career choices. What he witnessed while in combat left a lasting impression on him, and he often spoke out against violence and war in his life. But his military experience also helped in shaping his on-screen persona since he was often portrayed as a tough, no-nonsense character in Western and action films. He brought a level of authenticity to his roles because he had actually served in the military and saw combat firsthand. After being discharged in the year 1945, Marvin went back home to Woodstock, where he met Pamela Feely, who was only 16 at the time and Marvin was 22. Regardless of the age difference, the two went on to date. When Marvin decided to move back to the city and pursue acting, Feely accompanied him. He enrolled in the American Theatre Wing where he studied acting and even featured in small theatre productions. In 1948, Marvin Lee got his first ever Broadway role in the play Billy Budd, and despite his role being small, it marked the beginning of his successful acting career. He went on to act in plays and also began appearing in TV shows and movies, with his first film role being in the movie You Are in the Navy in 1951. In the same year, Marvin met Betty Eddington and the two got married. The two were married for 16 years before their divorce in 1967. They had four children, their first being Christopher, who was born in 1952 and later on passed away in 2013. Their daughters, Courtney and Cynthia, were born in 1954 and 1956 respectively. Their youngest son was born in 1958 but sadly died in 2012. Despite their divorce, Betty and Lee remained close until his death. From there on until the 1960s, Lee Marvin's career continued to rise due to his significant roles in several films. One of his most famous performances was in 1953 in the film The Wild One, which was directed by Laszlo Bebedek. In the film, he plays the role of Chino, who is a rival to Marlon Brando's character, who leads a motorcycle gang and causes chaos in a small town. Lee's performance in this film helped in establishing his persona as a tough menacing figure on screen. In 1955, Marvin starred in Bad Day at Black Rock, which was directed by John Sturgis and in the film, he played the role of Reno Smith, a violent and racist bully. The plot of the film revolves around Spencer Tracy's character, a one-armed stranger who comes to town and crosses paths with Smith. Smith's role was intense, and the performance helped in elevating the tension and drama in the film. Marvin's career continued to thrive in the 1960s, and he appeared in several iconic films during the time like The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, directed by John Ford. In the film, Marvin played the character of Liberty Valance who was a brutal outlaw that terrorizes a town. His performance was both powerful and memorable, and helped in cementing his status as leading man in Hollywood. In 1965, Marvin had another significant role in the film Cat Baldo, directed by Elliot Silverstein. He played two roles, one of a drunken, deadbeat gunslinger Kid Shelling, and the outlaw Tim Strawn. Marvin's performance in the film was praised by many, 
and he went on to win the Academy Award for Best Actor for his role as Kid Shelling. The Dirty Dozen was a war film released in 1967 and directed by Robert Aldrich. The film was about a group of death row convicts who are recruited to take part in a dangerous mission during World War II. Lee played the lead role of Major Reisman in the film, which also starred Ernest Borgnine, Charles Bronson, and Jim Brown. However, Marvin hated the film since he said that it didn't feel like war at all, and he only did it for the money. Either way, it was a commercial success and is still a classic in the genre. Paint Your Wagon was the next classic Lee Marvin appeared in which was released in 1969. It was a musical western film directed by Joshua Logan and starred Clint Eastwood and was based on the Broadway musical of the same name. In the film, Marvin sang a number of songs like Wandering Star, which became a hit and earned him a gold record. Since Marvin wasn't known for his singing abilities, he was reportedly nervous about performing the song, but surprisingly ended up being one of the most memorable parts of the film. In 1970, Lee Marvin left his partner at the time, Michelle Triola, to be with his sick father back in Woodstock, New York. There, he reconnected with his old girlfriend, Pamela Feely, and they got married on October 18 of the same year, but their happiness was short-lived. In 1971, Michelle sued Marvin for palimony in California, which was a big case at the time. She claimed that she had been in a long relationship with Marvin, hence she deserved financial support from him. The case drew a lot of attention from the media and became known as Marvin vs. Marvin case. In the initial trial, Triola was awarded $100,000, but the verdict was later overturned by higher courts and she didn't receive anything. This case set a legal precedent for the rights of unmarried partners, and hence creation of the term palimony, which refers to financial support from a partner in a non-marital relationship. Michelle later lived with Van Dyke for more than 30 years until her death on October 30, 2009 from lung cancer at the age of 45. In 1975, being tired of the publicity that the trial brought with it, Lee and Pamela moved to Tucson, Arizona away from the spotlight. The two settled into a house in the foothills of the Santa Catalina Mountains, where Lee could partake in his passion for fishing and hunting. Despite the move, he continued to work in films and starred in a number of action movies like The Klansman, 1974, Shot at the Devil, 1976, and Avalanche Express, 1979. Lee also appeared in the television miniseries Centennial, 1978, which was based on James A. Missioner's novel. In Tucson, Marvin and Pamela lived a quiet life as they enjoyed the desert scenery and serene surroundings. Lee Marvin passed away on August 29, 1987 at the age of 63 in Tucson. He had suffered from a heart attack and other health complications. At the time he died, he was surrounded by Pamela, their children, and his daughter from his previous marriage. His death came as a shock to many of his fans and colleagues who mourned his demise and remembered him as a talented and charismatic actor. His contributions to the film industry were marked by many awards and honors, like a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. After his death, Pamela continued to live in Tucson and continued to work as an artist and writer. She published a memoir about her life with Marvin called Lee, A Romance, in 1998 which gave readers a glimpse into their relationship and challenges they faced together. And that brings us to the end of our video. True to the word, Marvin's life was a true embodiment of the American dream. His legacy lives on through his films which continue to inspire and entertain audiences worldwide. His love story with Pamela shows the power of second chances and importance of finding true love. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment on who which Hollywood icon you want to see on our next video. Thanks for watching.